Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have the Insta360 Sphere. It is a dedicated 360 camera for the DJI Air 2 and Air 2S, and we're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So first of all, if you're new to Ready, Set, Drone, please hit the subscribe button. If you like drone content, we do a ton of it. And this is a very exciting video because I love the Air 2S and I love 360 cameras. So those two happen to be getting together in this video and we're gonna check it out. I wanna start by telling you that I did not receive this from Insta360. I paid for it myself. They had nothing to do with it. So this is my own unbiased opinion. I've been using it for about two months now and I have lots of thoughts on it. So let's start by going through the specs. The Insta360 Sphere has a fixed aperture of f2 with a maximum bit rate of 100 megabits per second. You can take photos at up to 6080 by 3040 at a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, so a you know, wide aspect ratio or tall, I guess. And then you can do video at 5.7K in 30, 24, and 25 frames per second. And then it has a few options to do uh, lower resolution at higher frame rate. So if you wanted to do slow motion, you just can't do it at the 5.7K. The Insta360 Sphere weighs 192 grams and has a runtime of 48 minutes on one battery. The battery is removable, which I think is nice, so that you can pull it in and out. It charges via USB-C and it has this little indicator here that tells you whether or not it is charged, how many little lights it has. You know, just like on a drone battery, there's four lights, four is a full charge, etc. Um, I like that a lot about it. I like how easy the battery is to get in and out as well. It's just a little door that pops open and closes. It has apps for both Android and iOS, and it retails for 429 US dollars for this with one battery. But it does come with a couple of accessories. It comes with um, a charging cable, of course. It comes with the rubber mounts that go over the lenses. And it actually comes with little plastic bits that go onto the lenses and keep them protected when you're flying or when you're landing. And it comes with a landing pad, which is actually a pretty cool landing pad. It's uh, smallish as far as landing pads go, but it's got kind of a rubbery texture so that if you're flying with it, you're not going to scratch the lens. So you never want to scratch the lens on a 360 camera because it's really, really apparent in the footage if the lens is scratched. That's why they give you these two rubber things to go over the top of it and the landing pad, because when you land on this, it's a rubbery, soft kind of texture. It's not gonna scratch the lens, even if you kind of slide on it a little bit, which is nice. So now let's talk about the things I really like about the Insta360 Sphere. First of all, it is pretty easy to put onto the drone. So to put it on, you just pull this little spring right here and you lift up this little knob right here and then it comes apart like that, there's a little latch, and then there is a piece of metal on the bottom that's kind of shaped like an arrow. The arrow faces forward on the drone and goes on the back two um, cutouts, go over the light and the back sensor. So it fits right in like that, and then you just kind of put the latch on the top and latch it down, and you can see the way it is right there, it's not covering the light and it's not covering the back sensor, which is really nice. And when it's on there, it is just rock solid. It feels like it's not going anywhere at all. I really like the fact that it's custom built for this drone and fits it so well, and it's not covering any sensors. Now, one thing about this setup is that it does tend to make your GPS acquisition of satellites much slower. So what I suggest you do is set the drone down, turn it on, acquire all your satellites without this on it, and then add the uh, sphere to the drone after you've acquired all your satellites. You can even turn it off, put the sphere on, and then turn the drone back on and it'll get the satellites a lot quicker. But once it does acquire satellites, you can get plenty of satellites with this on, no problem at all. Now you can see it kind of sits a little bit wonky here, and I'll go ahead and take the rubber pads off. 
it sits kind of either back like this or front like that. I tend to put it front like that so that the gimbal is um, not skewed diagonally. It's kind of, it's, it is skewed forward, but it's, it's level left to right for takeoff. Usually though, I calibrate the gimbal before I put this thing on, so it doesn't really matter. But you can see it fits on there really well. It does um, block the battery from coming off. So if you need to change batteries while this is on there, you're gonna have to take this off before you put a new battery on your drone. So it does have an app for iOS and Android. The app is very easy to use. You basically can just turn it on. And once it's on, you turn on your Bluetooth on your phone. And by the way, there are two buttons on it. There is a power button and a record button. And then when you actually turn it on, there is a little blue LED that comes on. I don't know if you can see that blue LED, but that means that the uh, Insta360 is turned on. And so now I've got the app on here and I should be able to reconnect to it. So I'll say reconnect, join the network. And once I do, you'll be able to see that I get a live view from the camera. Now, I, that means I can spin it around, up and down, left and right. I'm spinning it right there. But there is a stitch line. And the stitch line is a space in between here and here, which makes the drone invisible, but that's because it's not recording in this space. So the way to get around that stitch line, so for example, you can see on my phone right here that you can't see my face right there because my face is right in the middle of the stitch line. If I move it up, then I'm being captured by the bottom camera. If I move it down, I'm being captured by the top camera. But that stitch line is problematic if the drone is too close to you while this camera is on it. So you basically want to use this for further distances, you know, landscape shots, that sort of thing. You don't want it close-ups like this. I mean, if you were going to take a picture of me with this setup, you would just use the, the camera on the drone itself. So keep in mind that that stitch line is there and you have to be farther away from subjects in order to avoid it, but you still might see it in some cases um, if you are focusing on something right at that level. Now, as soon as you go up or down or in other directions, it disappears, especially when you're using things like the tiny planet setting. But overall, the app is very easy to use and I'm a big fan of it. Also, the editing software that you use for it is pretty easy to use as well. But I'll talk more about that in a second. So those are the things I really like about the Insta360 Sphere. But really the thing I like the most is the unique footage you can get using this camera and this camera alone. So now let's talk about the things I'm not a big fan of with this camera, and there are several of them. Number one is, again, that stitch line that I was talking about. It is a little bit problematic at times, depending on how you edit. You really kind of have to edit around that stitch line in order to avoid seeing it in both close-up and wide shots. So you don't want your subject to ever be right here at this level. You want it to be above you or below you so that the cameras are picking up the subject. 
um, and wider shots work better. Number two, the weight of this thing, while it's fairly light at 192 grams, it still impacts the way the drone flies. You can definitely feel the difference. You don't get as much flight time and you um, don't have quite the precision and control that you have without this thing. This is a great flying little drone, but you've put a payload on it of 192 grams, which is a fairly big percentage of the weight of this thing, and it can definitely feel it. And so you'll want to compensate for that. Don't try to fly quite as long or as far with this on as you would normally without it on and don't count on the same flight times. Another thing I'm not a big fan of is that when you're using the app, it works great when it's close to you within 10 meters or about 30 feet, but as soon as you get outside of that range, you lose it. And so while it's close, you can spin around and look at different perspectives. You can start and stop video. You can take photos, you can change settings, but as soon as it flies away, you're stuck with whatever you have. So if you're recording video, you're gonna to have to basically start the video recording, fly your mission, go out and do whatever you're gonna do, and then come back and then have one giant clip that you edit in post. You can't start and stop that video while it's far away from you. You also can't really take photos when it's far away from you, and that's a bit annoying because it may be that you want a photo while it's way over there, well, you can't really start a photo or just take an individual photo because you can't even change modes or anything like that. Now, I suppose you could put it into some sort of a time lapse and do a whole bunch of photos, a sequence, and find the one you want. But that's not really ideal. I do wish that Insta360 would create a remote control for this that has a farther range and allows you to start and stop video as well as um, take individual photos as you're flying quite a ways off because it's really kind of a pain that you can't do that more than 30 feet with the app. And so in addition to the weight of it and you know lower drone performance, the stitch line and then the range on the app, my last sort of gripe about it is that you have to do post-production on every single piece of footage or photo that you do take. You can't just put it up um, into a timeline in Premiere and edit it. I mean, you can use the plugin for Premiere, but you still have to do post in order to make these videos look good. And that sort of makes sense because when you're shooting in 360, you're capturing an entire 360 view, but ultimately you have to decide what is the audience gonna see, or is, is this gonna be an actual 360 video? You have to go in and make keyframes and make adjustments and decisions about which filter you're gonna use, et cetera, on every clip and then export it so that you can use it in your regular videos. Um, some people love that. It's a lot of control and it gives you a lot of versatility and a lot of flexibility and a lot of options with each of your video clips. You can say, take the same video clip from this and edit it an infinite number of ways so that it looks different each time, you know, different perspectives, different filters, etc. But you have to do that every time. You can't just pull these straight into a timeline and work with them or um, upload them directly to social media. It's, it's a kind of blessing and a curse at the same time. So that leads me to the final point, which is, is this uh, camera worth it for the Air 2S and the Air 2? And my answer is, if you don't mind doing that extra work and you want that extra creative freedom, then yes, it is. If you aren't the type of person that wants to do that extra work or spend that extra time to create all the keyframes and do all the editing and post, and it's not very difficult, it just, it just takes some time, right? If you shoot 30 or 40 clips in a day, you're still gonna have to go back and do all that post to every single one of them. So do you wanna do that or not? And really that should answer the question about whether this is worth it. I mean, it's kind of true of all 360 cameras, but especially on this one, because you're gonna shoot long video clips because you can't control it from the range. You start it, you might go out and fly for a 15 minute thing. You have a 15 minute clip, you gotta go in and find the parts of it that you want, align it the way you want, add the filters that you want, etc. If you're into that, then I think it's worth it. But if you're not into that and you just want video straight off the camera, then you have a perfectly good camera right here on the front of this thing that takes amazing stabilized video that you can just use and don't worry about this. That's my take on it. If you're into doing the post in 360, then it's worth it. But if you're not, it's not. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Insta360 Sphere. Please comment below. Please be sure to subscribe if you like drone content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.